As we come to our time of gospel meditation this morning, we're going to be looking at a passage in which Jesus demonstrates himself to be different from any other man who lived in all of human history. So if you have your Bibles with you, would you turn with me to Matthew chapter 27? We're going to be looking at verses 41 and 42 together. This is Matthew's account of the crucifixion. And by this time, Judas has betrayed Jesus. The religious leaders have tried Jesus and Pilate has handed Jesus over to be crucified. Jesus is now hanging on the cross. He's beaten, he's bruised, and he's bloodied, and he's there for all to see in full view. Matthew mentions four groups of people in his gospel account of the crucifixion. First, he mentions the Roman soldiers. These are the ones who actually crucified Jesus. They are sitting at the base of the cross, ignorant and unaware of what it is that they've just done. They have no idea that they have just crucified the creator of the universe. Then Matthew mentions the Jewish people who are passing by. These people are hurling insults at Jesus as they see him hanging on the cross. These are the same people who were hailing Jesus a week earlier in the triumphal entry. And then Matthew mentions the two robbers, the criminals who are hanging with Jesus, also being crucified. These men also were hurling insults at Jesus at the time that they were crucified. But our focus this morning is going to be on the fourth group of people that Matthew mentions. Matthew mentions the religious leaders, the chief priests. These are the men who hated Jesus the most. And they make a claim against Jesus in verse 42. So as we read our passage together, let's take note of what that claim actually is. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him and saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him now come down from the cross and we will believe in him. Their claim against Jesus is in verse 42 and their claim is that Jesus cannot save himself. It was their statement that they saw a beaten, bloodied, defeated man hanging on a cross, just being crucified by the most powerful military force in the world at that time. They were saying to Jesus, you can't possibly be God. Because you are still on that cross, you are proving yourself to be no different than any other man that the Romans have crucified before. But this was a claim made by men who could not see beyond the outward appearance. All they could see was a defeated man dying on a cross. What they had no ability to see was that by staying on the cross, Jesus was actually accomplishing something that no other man could accomplish. In a matter of six hours, Jesus was doing something truly astounding. He was satisfying the wrath of a holy God against every single man in all of human history who had placed their trust in Jesus as their Savior and their Lord. The lost world sees nothing significant, nothing special about the death of Jesus on a cross. But scripture, God's word, gives us God's design for what was actually taking place on that cross. The incarnate son took on flesh and went to a cross so he could bear the sin of all of those who looked to him as their savior and Lord. And he could satisfy the father's wrath against that sin completely, fully satisfying it for all of the repentant sinners who would submit to him as their savior and their Lord. That, and that alone, is God's design for how sinful man is reconciled to a holy God. It's the only way for sinful man to be forgiven of their sin and rescued from the judgment that otherwise awaits them. And that is good news for the believer today. So Grace Bible Church, take your encouragement from the fact that Christ accomplished salvation for all of those who would look to him. He was indeed different from any other man in all of human history. 